everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com, and welcome to the Daily Futures Market Outlook, where we take a look at our big six markets and formulate an attack method for tomorrow's trading with the information that the market is giving us right now. Uh, now, generally speaking, it it's a little bit easier to make a forward plan for the next day, but tomorrow, a little bit of a different one, a uh, little bit of a different one. We got a lot of big news coming out tomorrow, and uh, well, yeah, things can get a little bit weird. Really good to see all of the movement coming back to the markets today. Really loving that fact. Tomorrow, we may have a little bit of a wild ride, so just hang on to those seats and uh, play it safe tomorrow. Now, before we jump into the charts, as always, make sure to swing on over to the website. Scroll down and click on the Join the Daily Outlook newsletter. This is going to add you to our email list that you know every single time one of these videos comes out. We also talk about different stocks, different cryptocurrencies, all kinds of different stuff uh, in, in the newsletter. It's just a great newsletter to be a part of. Along with that, at the bottom of the page, every single day we post both a live trade room. Uh, in this case, today was a live trade, an example trade that we took. Uh, but we also post market psychology videos, the morning prep levels, which go over the major levels of support and resistance all kinds of good stuff at the bottom of the page so make sure to check that out every single day and if you haven't done so already the live trading subscription and trial info button right here you can sign up for a one-day trial in the room and see what we're all about if you really enjoy it you can always sign up for a weekly or monthly membership and of course if you join as a full-fledged vip member you get the live trade room as part of the package so you never have to worry about spending anything ever again now overall the Bund was, well, slightly bearish, right? <laughs> and we, we had some pretty good downward momentum here uh, working its way pretty much all day. There was a small little correction from about 6 o'clock to 8.30 or so, and it managed to drive right back down to the lows again. After that low was tested, we just kind of been stuck in this little bit of a range here. Now, if we zoom out, generally speaking, we always want to keep the bigger picture in mind. You know, what's what's the general trend? We had a move down, we're going into a range, so we have a downward bias. But there's a little bit of, a, uh, of an issue with this one. We are also in a much larger range and we are very near the lows. So it's going to be very difficult to have much more than a short-term bearish bias now, just given the location. We have ran aggressively to the lows of that area, but that said, you know, the same thing happened back here. We ran aggressively to highs and it collapsed right back down again. So just because it's an aggressive run doesn't necessarily mean anything on this kind of market when we're going back and forth for the most part. And arguably, we have a much larger downward bias uh, in play as well. So looking to sell high is a much better scenario to find ourselves in. And right now, we are high in terms of the smaller range, but we are low in terms of the larger range. So it's a little bit of a choppy, sloppy kind of area that we're expecting here. Now, overall, we can still trade it like a range, buy low, sell high, but just be careful of those potential breakout areas. The lows of the range seem best around 60.76. The highs, got a couple different options here. 60.98 up to 61.06 is that area of interest. And then right up here towards the top, we had a nice little ping off of that breakthrough, came back, retested it, and that's going to be at 161.13. So several levels of resistance above us that we can use to our advantage uh, and a couple levels of support below us. Overall, though, looking to be a seller at uh, the high just depends on what high the market wants to give us now looking at the euro well a little bit of a different picture right the euro was just a rocket ship we had a huge move to the upside early in the morning session nice little pullback period forming a slight bull flag pattern here and we broke out of that flag pattern nice little pullback several attempts on the pullback and then a rip right back up again now this aggression to the upside is showing us that the buyers have some objectives above us uh, not only are we floating around that big 1000 level big level to keep our eyes on but we also have a major upside objective for the buyers up at 10 191 so that is the next area that we're looking for the market to want to dig up into the one thing that we have going on right now is a little bit of a tight little channel forming inside here we're trying to break out it's not doing so well and a lot of times when this type of formation sets up it's giving you a clue that a larger pullback may be in store now for me i wouldn't mind a larger pullback at all even if it ground lower and just kind of took its time we have a couple different areas of interest obviously if it just spiked down on this candle right now we do have the kill zone right there but we also have another one right here so if it takes its time getting back we might have a nice little pop right off of there as well. So the overall range that we're breaking out of right here, looking for a breakout pullback would work beautifully. And either way, still looking for that objective up at the highs near that 200 level. Uh, and it all is lining up pretty well. So nice little pullback wouldn't hurt anything. And that would offer up some nice buying pressure back towards the upside. 
I'm gold. Uh, once again, flip-flopping up, down, up, down. This time we're looking at gold and it's down. We have a nice bearish move on the way lower. And this is just continuation off of that massive momentum that we've had for quite a while, right? We had a big breakdown. We went range bomb. That was the French elections. We went a little bit sideways, broke down again, went sideways, broke down again, and arguably we're still breaking down. This all looks like it's part of the same breakout and we haven't really stopped. Uh, so with this phenomenal downside movement, we're expecting the sellers to want to continue selling. There are a couple kinks to this one though. We do have a possibility of a wedge bottom and notice how it got so aggressive below here. And after that aggression was kind of taken out on the markets for lack of a better way to say it, they haven't really been able to go anywhere. And that's more indicative of a potential uh, of seeing slight exhaustion. The sellers may just not have any more ammo, uh, any more bullets in the gun to send at this market. It just hasn't stopped going down. So likely what I would like to see right now is just a better price, right? Look for a better pullback up towards the highs of this potential range that formed earlier, especially if you can get a test into the earlier consolidation lows, which broke down turn it into resistance and that's going to be anywhere from 1232.4 on up to around 33.8 this whole area is a phenomenal area for possible selling looking for selling opportunities out of that zone back down to the lows so still looking to be a seller on gold obviously but uh well preferably at a slightly better price the bonds, we are still grinding lower. The bonds price action has been lackluster, which would be an understatement. Uh, we moved down to a 10 minute chart and that's almost not enough anymore. Uh, you know, looking at a five minute chart, you can see there is a lot of chop and slop inside here uh, with some halfway decent runs. Going even further out to like a 15 minute chart, it looks a little bit better, but you can see a trend here. We're having to constantly go slower and slower and slower just to get the market to look halfway decent right so looking at a faster time frame we do have a possible wedge forming from the lows nice little push to the upside here and we're forming a flat topped wedge now a lot of times you want to see this with a bull formation flat top in a breakout you don't so much want to see that with a bear formation we have a nice bearish drop lower and they keep continuing to come back to the highs and the reason that's not a good thing for the sellers is because where are the sellers right the buyers are able to get back to the exact same place where they started but the sellers can't even make new lows. So we're seeing a little bit of weakness. In order for the sellers to take over, we're gonna need one heck of a candle or a good group of candles to really break this wedge down and show that the sellers mean business. Otherwise, if we get a strong breakdown and it immediately reverse, that is a big red flag. And we could be looking for a rally back up into the 152s and depending on how strong, maybe even into the 153s. Now, a couple areas of interest for possible selling. Uh, we have the high end, of course, of this wedge at 151.27. Uh, and a little bit above that would be at 152.02, just back above the 152 levels. And then we have 152.07 from the 60 minute chart offering up a good amount of resistance there as well. Uh, so we've got a couple areas of resistance above us but again you know if we start seeing that sign of failure from the sellers they might not hold very well and it may just go rip into the upside now speaking of ripping uh crude oil on the downswing a little bit uh, <laughs> just a complete hammer to the downside continuing that bearish move that's been going on for quite a while we were stuck in a range for a very long time they tried breaking out failed but notice they didn't make a new high that's a big clue and we start pulling back down we break down again aggressive breakdown we go into a range and we aggressively break down again so we have a huge amount of bearish are just uh, the bears are no joke right now they are not letting off the gas pedal now, a couple things to keep our eyes on. We do have drawing from all the way over here. We have a possible wedge bottom that broke down really aggressively. You can see they tried holding it. And a lot of times when you break through a level that strongly, the market may return to that area, which is right now, by the time they get up there, around 46 half or so, uh, maybe even a little bit lower for an area of resistance. We are very far detached from that right now, but it certainly isn't out of the realm of possibility, especially not when you get days like this. Now, the bears are very obviously in control, but we're seeing them run into a little bit of trouble, right? We have a major objective below us at 4521, and they're having a hard time even breaking down to test it. They're getting really hung up just ahead of that area, right around the 14540s. So really what I would like to see is for them to break down sooner rather than later, finish that objective, maybe go range bond in the overnight and then continue or reverse. That's where they have to make their decision. But overall, I'm looking for selling pressure down to hit that objective at 4521. 
Now, if I had my choice, I would prefer to sell between 4580 to 92. But a lot of times when you have this bearish of a market, it's not going to give you that chance. Uh, it may, it may pop up there in the overnight session. More often than not, though, you're going to see this breakdown and just keep on going uh, through the overnight session. So if we can get a breakdown of at least a rising level of support, that may be the overnight entry area just to hang on and let it go. Uh, but again, I would prefer a better price if the market gives me the option to. And then finally, the S&P. Uh, the S&P not really doing a whole lot. Lots of movement, but not really a lot of distance, right? We had a lot of movement, but we really didn't accomplish a whole lot. Uh, looking at today's movement and the, the past several days, we're still stuck in the same range. We opened the ETH session right here, and we're closing the ETH session right there. That daily candle is going to look horrendous. Uh, not a good-looking daily candle by any means. Uh, it is bullish. I guess, right? With all the wick on the highs, it's hard to call it that, but uh, the buyers did control the day. Even with that massive failure through the lows, they were still able to close the daily candle bull side. Uh, arguably speaking, we're still in a range, right? We had a nice little range right here, broke above it, came back down, and we widened out to a new range right here. They broke down, came back up in, and now we're forming a new range once again. This time, the range high looks good around 86 quarter up to 87 and three quarter or so. But we also have monthly support right here at 81.75 and the lows of the range at 81.25. Uh, if they can break down lower than that, we have major 60 minute support at 78 and a quarter. It's already proven itself one time. I'd be very interested to see what they do if they can pull down again. Uh, but assuming that we're in a range, right? We have a range sentiment. If we zoom out, we want to get an idea of what the sentiment is. It's bullish, right? Nice bullish momentum to the upside. We're in a range and we're near the lows of the range cycling off. Every time we dip down to these lows, it is a gr just an aggressive rip back to the upside. Uh, and in all, in all honesty, this kind of looks like another one of those situations where we get that nice rip to the upside. Notice this looks very similar, right? And we get a nice breakout. Very similar patterning together uh, a lot of times leads to the same results. So looking for a bullish move into tomorrow uh, back up towards those highs again. Now, that's going to do it for the outlook. And one thing to keep in mind, tomorrow is a big news announcement day. Okay, so everything that we're talking about right now, it could be completely wrong. <laughs> that's the fun thing about dealing with huge news like non-farm payrolls, unemployment rate, etc., it's going to be a little bit of a funky one. So we've got to play it a little bit safe tomorrow. Uh, we do have a lot of news tomorrow. Again, as a Japanese holiday. Once again, Children's Day. At 8.30 tomorrow in the U.S. session, we have non-farm payrolls. Forecast, 185,000. Previous, 98,000. We also have the unemployment rate. Previous was 4.5%. They're forecasting an increase to 4.6%. Out of Canada, we have the employment change, which is forecasted at 10,000 versus 19.4 thousand. We also have the IBPMI uh, forecasted at 62.3 versus 61.1 as the previous, and that's going to happen at 10 o'clock. Now, if that wasn't enough, if non-farm payrolls wasn't enough, out of all the things going on, we also have at 13.30 Eastern Time, Federal Chairwoman Yellen is speaking, and that just makes it even more fun. So tomorrow, anticipating a really rocky ride, make sure, like we always say, make the plan, trade the plan, follow your rules, and be safe tomorrow. It could be a little bit of an interesting one. So just hang on. We'll see you all tomorrow.